Hey everyone, Wayne Fox here. Uh, gear video today about my Mac. I have a, it's called an Express M, uh, 4M2, and it's designed to hold four uh, little SSD chips on it. I've currently got uh, four two terabyte chips. Three of them are from Sabrent, and they're rated as a Ray Zero. And then the other one is an older one I've got, and I think it's actually only one terabyte. And it's just a backup uh, to boot from in case something happens. And as an external, it uses Thunderbolt 3, and I've been a little disappointed in the speed. And I thought, you know, I really need to get some internal speed in this. I didn't buy it with a very large SSD. And so what I've decided to try is taking these out, and I've bought an OWC Excelsior card, which is a PCI card. Now, this thing is rated at 6,000 megabytes a second if you buy the SSDs along with it from Other World Computing. And I didn't do that. I bought the card without any SSDs, and I'm going to move these over into that and see if I get any better speed out of the internal PCI bus than I do through the PCI bus that's shared through Thunderbolt 3. Theoretically, that Thunderbolt 3 PCI bus is a 40 megabytes a second uh, transfer speed, and I'm thinking that an internal PCI bus actually has a little bit more speed than that. Uh, obviously, right now, we're still stuck with PCI 3.0, and I think the next version of the PCI standard, which will be in computers over the next year or two, uh, ramps that up considerably. But anyway, let's take this apart and let's uh, move it over and throw it in and test it just to see if putting it internal actually gets me any speed. And I really, if I don't, I'm going to have to probably buy some faster SSDs because I really want to be able to get some real speed out of this when I'm working on my videos and stuff. The faster the speed, the more... Uh, uh, the, the quicker I can do certain things like run a uh, compressor and things like that. Okay, so let's open up the box first and see what we have here. I lost my trusty little red knife that I use for these videos in my move. And so now we've got to break out a new one. I don't do too many unboxing videos, but they are kind of fun to do, so I like doing them. Um, And here's the, uh, here's the box. As you can see, it's a standard PCI card. Got some cooling that'll come out the back. I assume they'll tell me which slot to put it in and how it works. So let's open it up. I, I don't think this will be too difficult to change over. It looks like they give you tools to do it with, a little torque screwdriver and a little Phillips head. I don't think I really need the directions because this should be pretty straightforward. So let's take a look at the card here. So it looks to me like it looks, maybe I will just check the directions real quick. It looks like I have to take out and there are no directions. There's probably, there is a web guide, but I don't think I need that. It looks like I take out these four screws, which drops out this heat sink. That's where the torque, that's why the torque screwdriver. I'm a pretty big fan of OWC. Most everything I've bought from them, I bought stuff from them for years, has been, uh, Outstanding quality. Looks like there's one more Torx screwdriver on the end here that has to come out. Or is that a Phillips? No, I think it's a Torx. There you go. That was all right. So that should be it to take this off. All right. Oh, yeah. So they've got a great big heat sink pad built in. So it's pretty simple to put the SSDs in. Um, we just need to get them out of this one. And it looks like I lost that screw. It's not there anymore. I've experimented with various brands of SSDs. Um, I've got some Sabrent ones that I've been fairly happy with. As you can see, I have three Sabrent two terabyte SSDs. These are the lower price ones. And then I've got this old one here. And I think I have another one of these around. And so I think once I do my tests, um, I think I'm going to go ahead and put. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and put the four matching ones inside, and try to rate all four of them together. All right. 
right, pretty easy to take them out. And we'll set this aside. I did drop one screw down inside, so let's see if we can get it to fall out. There we go. Set this aside. Those screws go with it. Let's go ahead and drop these in. I don't think that it really matters which goes into which slot. So we'll just start there. One thing I do know is that some SSDs are thicker. Whoops. And so I'm curious if this will handle the double height ones. It looks like it will. There's a lot of room right there. So it looks like it'll handle pretty much anything. When you put these in this way, this is spring loaded, I found it easier to kind of balance the screw and then tip it up and then it's pretty easy to screw that in at that point. Okay, and I'll shut up and throw this into fast motion now. SSDs in here. I'm a little concerned that this foil has come unattached here, but I think this heat sink will press down and it'll be okay. All right, let's put this back on. It's a pretty beefy heat sink. Okay. Now we need our little Torx screwdriver. Interesting, that seems to bow a little bit. I assume that that thermal tape will, over time, kind of mush out and with constant pressure and kind of even out. All right, well, we've got those in. It's now it's time to pop open the Mac Pro and see if we can uh, get it in there. Okay, so I'm ready to put my Excelsior into the Mac Pro. If you wanna just see how well it does, I'll, there's a timestamp right there, jump ahead. Uh, some people like to see this kind of stuff, others don't. This is the, uh, Mac Pro is uh, designed pretty well. I guess when considering what they charge, it ought to be. Um, just gonna lay it down on its side. And I've got a little light I'm going to throw in here just to, I know it's a little dark in there. This will help a little bit. So the card fits uh, any 16 lane or 8 lane slot. It's not supposed to go in a 4 lane slot. I believe in the Mac Pro this is the only 4 lane slot. I believe these are all 8 lane. I think this is a 16 lane. I've never used a lot of PCI cards in, my, in the past. There's not a lot of need for them. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this off here first. There's a little lock switch right here. We'll unlock that. And I think I'm gonna use this slot right here. So I need to pull this little spacer out. We drop this in. Lock it. I uh, did touch something grounded before I started to make sure I didn't have any static. I've really never had, I've handled hundreds of hard drives and other electronics uh, over the last 40 years. I've actually never really lost a device from static. Um, I know it's something you have to kind of watch out for. And we're good to go. Put the top back on and we'll give it a test and see how well it performs. Okay, I'll be back with a minute. We'll have black magic going and we'll see how well it does. Okay, so I've got my uh, card and my Mac Pro back here. 
ready to give it a run. We'll see if I uh, get any more speed. Uh, let me first show you what I, uh, the results of the test I did before I took it out of the little uh, cabinet they were in, and then we'll run some tests and see if it's any better. So we have Blackmagic loaded. i have using using the five gigabyte test. Uh, here I have to select the drive that I want to test and just see what it does. And typically a SSD all by itself can get this kind of speed. And you'll notice over here the read speed is pretty slow. Uh, I actually think there's a problem with Blackmagic in the way it's uh, testing these SSDs. I've just seen too many inconsistencies on external drives and I don't see any of that on the internal drives. And yet I'm not seeing this, you know, this is actually sort of poor performance. So anyway, let's get the SSDs moved to the new internal Excelsior card and see if we get any better results. All right, let's make sure we have the right drive. Again, we've got it set to the five gigabyte test. We're going to select the new drive, which I call internal eight terabyte. And let's see what we get. Well, that's pretty astounding. Uh, I wasn't expecting that. Actually, I was hoping for this. Uh, now it slows down again. Interesting. This is what I don't understand about the way that uh, the SSDs run. Really fast and really slow. And I don't know why they would slow down like this. So what I'm going to do, let's just see if they speed back up. No, they're still going to go slow. I have a different utility to test this with. I think I'm going to load it up and just see if it's more consistent because this just doesn't make any sense to me. One thing I like about this is it lets me just pick the drive here. It lets me set quite a few things. And one thing I can do is I can set a pretty large file. 64 gigs is pretty good size. I'm mimicking a full 4K uh, transfer, even codec. And so this gives me it's. What they claim is it's more of a real-world performance. Let's see what it says. And I assume what it's doing is it's writing a 64 gigabyte file to the hard drive, and then it's uh, reading the same file that it just wrote from off that drive. And it'll run the test one time. It does have the ability to run the test multiple times, so let's just give it a try there. Let's go here and... Let's go run continuously. Let's see if it slows down as it goes through. Yeah, see, it's doing the same thing. And so I need to do some research to see what is causing this uh, wild variance in speed. Uh, something to do with the actual brand of SSDs. Um, I just don't quite understand it. It does look like I'm getting a little bit better performance once I've moved them inside. And I think I'll do a little bit more research to see if maybe uh, there's something else I need to, some setting that I need to, to use that I'm not aware of. Let's let this run a couple more times just to see. It seems it's kind of staying consistent now. This is pretty amazing speed if you think about it. This is uh, six gigabytes a second almost. And I know when I transferred the, the data back over to the drive, once I formatted it, it didn't take very long. And it was, you know, it was like four terabytes worth of data. It seems to be staying consistent at this point. So I don't know what causes that little glitch. One more quick test. Let's stop it after this one. And let's start it again and see if it goes slower. Yeah, see there? Goes slower gradually ramps up. And then finally it kicked in. I don't understand what this process is. If this is something in the operating system and the file system, uh, I need to really, I need to do some homework on this one. And if I find out anything, I'll do a quick video uh, notice the read didn't drop that time, only the write, but my guess is the write this time will be faster. Yeah. So it seems like and I, maybe what I'm going to do is uh, try a one terabyte write just to see what I get. 
Well, there you have it. I'm kind of glad I did it. The one thing, uh, the little express uh, external box, the fan in that's actually a little bit louder than I'd like, especially because that I have my stuff a little closer to me now that I'm in my new house. And now that it's inside the Mac Pro, I've noticed that it is a little bit quieter behind me. Whether it was worth the $400, I don't know. Uh, it looks like it is a good investment, and I'm going to experiment with a few other SSCs just to see if, you know, what gives me the best combination. And I'll update the video or I'll put an update out if I find anything else. For those of you that have a Mac Pro, uh, if you really want the top-notch speed, you might want to buy the one that's pre-configured and has the OWC SSDs built into them and just to make sure that you get the max speed. But these are pretty low-priced SSDs, these uh, Sabrent that I use. It's not their top of the line. And it's uh, 6,000 uh, megabytes a second. It looks like isn't out of reach. So it's pretty cool. Anyway, hey, thanks for watching the video. Make sure you subscribe to the channel down there and hit that bell icon. I've got part two of my uh, color management video a couple days out. And it's uh, kind of an interesting part going over the history of color management. So anyway, thanks for watching. See ya.